welcome to lecture 11 of computational geometry. Uh, so, we will start on a new problem which is actually related to the problem of convex hulls and I will establish that relation in the course of the lecture, but let me first state the problem. Okay. Uh, so, we are what we are given, so we are talking about this problem called intersection of half planes. Okay. So, we are given a set of half planes what does the half plane look like? It is basically bounded by a line, okay. it is bounded by a line and you know one side of the line is the half plane that we have we you know will be pertaining to. So, you now I will just shade this indicating that you know this is the side of the half plane that I am interested in that is the half plane I am talking about. The line divides the plane into two half planes. Okay. So, the shaded side is the one that I am pertaining to. Okay. So, this is one half plane you know that is another half plane okay. let us call this H 1, H 2 you know we will have more half planes H 3, H 4 okay, something H 5 and so on and so forth. Okay. So, given these half planes by the way half plane is uh, a very simple example of a convex set right and half plane is convex and you can prove it by definition it is convex the entire segment of the two points lying inside the half plane will also be inside the half plane right. So, half planes is a con convex set and what I am interested in is given a set of let us say n half planes set S of n planes compute the intersection. So, H i which basically means the region common to all half planes. Now, in the example that I have given here. Um, I mean just by inspection what does it look I mean it should be common this this region should be common to all half planes. So, for instance uh, uh, is this point common to all half planes no because this point certainly does not satisfy H 5 right. Is this point common to all half planes no because it certainly does not satisfy H 4 right H 4 is H 4 is this this thing and the point is to the other side of H 4. Does this satisfy all uh, constraint all uh, all half planes that is the in, in region co common to all, all half planes oh, yes ok. Ok. So, if we have find so this one point is common. So, what we are interested in is not just one or two points, but the entire region that is common to all the half planes. And because half planes are convex by definition, the intersection of half planes will also necessarily be a half plane. And what is the intersection of all half planes? I mean, what kind of region is that? It is a convex region and it may be a convex, it is basically a convex polygon, right. It is a region which is convex, it is bounded by straight lines, which are essentially the lines bounding the half planes. So, intersection of half planes is a convex polygon provided. Well, I am not even talking about unborn. Unborn is one situation here, yeah, sure. So, it is not uh, strictly speaking uh, the convex polygon, yeah, the polygon is necessarily bounded. So, this may not be bounded. So, that is one, one problem. The, what is the other problem? Intersection. intersection can be null, exactly. The intersection may be empty, right. So, uh, so the common region is convex 
polygon in most cases okay but caveats is it may be unbounded okay and the other problem is it may be empty Fine. Um, how do we deal with uh, unbounded? Is there a simple way of dealing with unbounded so we don't have to consider you know, consider this as a special case when we are trying to design an algorithm? Yeah, so you are saying that I put a kind of a window, right? And the window should be a rectangular window, let us say, which should be large enough to contain. Right. See, okay, good. So that's what I was. Good. So, since it is unbounded, of course, the the rectangular region. I'm to be so the rectangular region. Suppose this is some rectangular region. What I what I want is that want make make sure is that even if it is unbounded, oh sorry, this is not unbounded. So, this region looks like unbounded. Oh, let me. Okay, so, these two uh, edges do not seem to converge, but you know basically they are going to grow. So, I can clip it using this, this rectangular window uh, and I will be happy to sort of and, the, and it kind, kind of cons contain uh, it, it, it uh, contains uh, all the vertices of the of the of the intersection region, right? Uh, so it misses out, of course, on the unbounded thing, but uh, as long it it has it has adequate description of this this in intersection region, uh, because it it captures all the vertices and all the vertices corner points are essentially going to be corner points of the, uh, the they'll be described by two or more let us say uh, lines bounding the half spaces, okay? And therefore, you know you can actually uh, in some sense compute somehow the smallest uh, if you compute the smallest and the largest uh, uh, intersection points you know uh, both in x and y direction that could be one that could define this rectangle because there will be no vertices falling outside the rectangle. So, that is one way to sort of deal with this this kind of uh, situation where it is unbounded. Um, we now the question of course is how do we compute this smallest and largest you know let me not get into that part but uh, just just so that you know we we can uh, we can we don't have to deal with unbounded regions is what i'm saying so some way we can simplify the whole thing without having to talk about unbounded regions essentially all i'm saying is that we have some extra kind of uh, half planes defined by these lines okay so along with the given half planes I am also looking at essentially these four half planes okay, and then that will bound the entire um, intersection. Okay. So, the intersection, inter intersection becomes bounded, okay. but uh, emptiness is something that we cannot wish away. Uh, why? In fact, emptiness is a very important problem. So, uh, one motivating uh, problem for this uh, finding intersection is, uh, can you tell me? Give me one example of why are you interested in intersection of half planes? Linear exactly. So, uh, 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 it's basically the constraints, uh, linear constraints are basically half planes, right? So, uh, uh, one of and and it is known that um, the problem of finding whether there is a feasible solution, okay, and the problem of actually solving the linear program, they're not very different in in complexity. Okay, so, the problem of finding intersection is almost equivalent to finding actually the optimum point. Okay. So, uh, so, just to find out if a given set of half planes has a non um, 
uh, non-trivial intersection that is it is not empty okay that itself is 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 a is a basic fundamental problem and we cannot wish it away so given a set of half planes just the problem tell us whether i mean the, to determine whether or not it defines a there is a non trivial feasible region is a basic problem so i can't wish that away right? so whenever i so in try in, in to solve this problem of finding the intersection of half spaces okay i have to deal with this one possibility that the intersection can be empty and we would not know in advance if the intersection is empty right? that we we'll discover over the course of the algorithm the algorithm should be able to tell us whether or not it is uh, intersection so you can see actually this problem you know uh, simply stated in two dimensions you know as you move to higher dimension it could become quite complicated in fact the full the linear programming is nothing but the the constraints in an arbitrary linear constraints in arbitrary direction uh, arbitrary dimensions okay so you have uh, these half planes which are constraints in in d dimensions okay and then there is some kind of objective function and that's uh, you know so finding the finding one point in the feasible region vis-a-vis -vis finding the optimal point in the feasible region as i'm saying and i'm claiming right now is they are not very different in complexities okay if you can find one you can kind of find the other so but you know this problem that uh, we are discussing today i'll be discussing independent of the problem of linear programming but there there's certainly you know some relevance to linear programming except that in linear programming we don't have to find the entire region see actually linear programming to some extent you can you may think about perhaps it is simpler than this problem because i will be happy to find only one feasible solution which is optimal solution i do not necessarily have to find the description of the entire feasible region okay which is which could be a convex polygon in two dimensions or a convex polytope in high dimensions although we have not discussed this issue before this but let me just uh, mention that the convex hull in higher dimension so which is that intersection of n half spaces in in dimension d what is the kind of descriptive complexity it may have i mean that 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 structure you know how complicated can that be in two dimension it's a convex polygon okay so that description of that structure okay is defined by let us say n corner points or the n edges and so on forth in three dimension i may have already brought it up once right so that 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 description is very similar to a in three dimensions if i take the intersection of n half planes in three dimensions and suppose that intersection is non empty that region is a convex three dimension convex polytope and what is the how would you describe a three dimension convex polytope you know how many faces how many corners you know how many edges yeah but what is the total sort of description and you know, what what is the complexity of that that structure four vertices and four triangles no no what is four vert vertices and four triangles uh, in three dimensions no 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 you're talking about uh, tetrahedrons i'm not talking about tetrahedrons you know those are intersection of four half half uh, half uh, spaces in three dimensions i am i am i am mentioning i am given n half spaces in let us say three dimension the intersection is suppose non empty it's a convex three dimension convex polytope okay For, uh, what is the how would you describe that you know what is the complexity of that structure you know how many faces how many edges how many corners uh, maybe n c 2 corners uh, n c 2 so that is y n c 2 n c 2 will be already n square kind of complexity right exactly so essentially the three dimensional convex polytope you know is is nothing but the a planar graph which for and so that is a uh, you know we can from the euler's formula it follows that now you know that you know a, a, a three dimensional structure okay uh, a plane so because it, these are all convex you know it, it not only the whole thing is convex the whole um, uh, intersection is convex if if i limit if you limit yourself to a plane okay look at one of the planes and look at the projection just look at the intersection of the remaining half planes with this plane suppose i take the i re restrict myself to a two dimensional plane okay one of the faces right so this is a three dimensional structure okay so let let us say i take one face okay and i only look at the 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 structure of one face that is a that is a two dimensional structure okay so that itself again will be a will be convex 
right so so now from here it kind of follows that you are not going to have you know uh, a, the, a plane can only describe at most one face you can't have the same plane describe two disconnected faces because that won't be convex okay so therefore it follows that the number of faces of this intersection is bounded by the number of number of planes here yeah, n right so so there are no more than n faces in the, of the three dimensional structure and if there are n faces by Euler's formula and the planar planarity it follow the, whatever the planar graph formula it follows the number of faces and the number of vertices and the number of edges in a graph they are kind of linearly related okay. so so the entire structure this three dimensional convex polytope described by the intersection of n half planes okay still has a linear structure it is it is it is not n choose two vertices or things like that okay so 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 in three dimensions as well as in two dimensions you still have a linear structure in two dimension is very simple it's exactly n in three dimension it's a planar graph kind of structure so it's order of n okay but thereafter you know things become murky so you uh, when once you go to four dimensions which you can't visualize of course then you have to resort to other ways of you know figuring out what the what the complexity is and without getting into too much details let me say that the complexity grows roughly as n to the power d over 2 so it's like in so higher dimensional uh, uh, convex polytope defined by intersection of n of spaces you know, that grows as roughly n to the power d over 2 in fact there is a kind of a floor on that right? and this is known to be tight so there are actually convex polytopes which can have that many number of it's it's not the faces it's it's everything it's the dimension 0 which is vertices dimension 1 that are edges so all the facets of dimension 0 to dimension d minus 1 so that can grow exponentially essentially right so if d is 2 or 3 you can see this is essentially order n or theta n moment d becomes 4 it becomes n square and thereafter it really really becomes very you know quite heavy and therefore when you actually solve linear programming okay you are not going to compute this entire feasible region because the feasible region can be can have an exponential size okay. there is no way you can actually if you if you want to do it in polynomial time you cannot afford to compute this right. so i am just trying to draw a line between that the fact that I'm, we are not really trying to attack the linear programming by constructing the intersection although intersection contains all the information about uh, linear programming but you know you can't afford to construct it but of course in lower dimension like we are dealing it within two dimensions uh, or three dimensions uh, you know we can you know we are just looking upon it as a problem which is interesting you know for other applications also and this has um, and 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 the, and the size is at most order n okay, size of the intersection so one thing let me do again uh, like we did for this uh, convex hulls so there seems to be at least intuitively some sort of connection between convex hulls in and computing the intersection of half spaces in the sense that both of them eventually give us some kind of convex polygons right but you know, what is the real relation or why should you know something that is de described by points be related to something that is described by half planes you know we, we can't you know we can't appreciate that right now but we did one thing when we tried to compute the convex hull you know at least in, in terms of conceptual simplicity we were able to um, delink the upper hull and the lower hull and we, we could only describe the algorithm in terms of uh, upper upper hull or lower hull right so here i will take a similar route where i will do the following i will distinguish between half planes you 
that are um, downward pointing I will just say what I mean by downward pointing uh, vis a vis upward pointing. Of course, we are missing out something, some things which are neither downward or not, not upward pointing. Anyway, first let us see what will be downward pointing. So, if this half plane, we have a half plane. So, essentially you know it is this is what I am saying is downward pointing okay. and this is a half plane that I am saying is upward pointing. Right. One quick test for this is after all the half plane is going to be described by some kind of inequality, a linear inequality. A quick test could be does this contain uh, the point you know y equal to minus infinity or something okay. and this is essentially contains y equal to plus infinity. So, just see that whether or not this satisfies the inequality. So, so I am I am just uh, dividing the set of given half planes into these two. Of course, there is this this kind of thing which is neither upwards nor downwards. So, since I cannot handle this you know we will say that you know these do not happen and why can not why can't this happen? We just do a you know random rotation good ok. So, you are we are speaking the same language now. Okay, so, these kind of bad things do not happen to us. Right, right, right. So now, now I'm just coming to that. I'm just coming to that. So now, once I have, I have, I have separated them out. These two kinds of things. Okay, then we talk about essentially uh, the intersection of of downward uh, half planes and intersection of upward half planes. Okay. So, we will compute them separately which means that the downward the first case you know you can imagine they all contain minus infinity y equal to minus infinity. So, it will look like something like, like this okay. and clearly if there is there are any of these downward half planes the intersection is non empty for sure because all of them will contain that minus infinity point right. so in some way we have also done away with this uh, empty emptiness problem by separating out the half planes and the upward ones okay will look like you know something like you know okay again this will be non empty and after we have computed them what do we do because we have to find out the intersection yeah no it is not pasting it is not pasting let me point out it is not going to be pasting simple pasting okay you know it, it could be more complicated than that but eventually for the final answer we will have to compute you know this intersection point and whatever is the intersection point okay and by the way this could actually be more complicated like this this could go on like this and so on and so forth okay but finally you know this is the region that uh, we are interested in. Okay. So, after we compute the intersection of the downward half planes, after we compute the intersection of the upward half planes, we will again have to deal with finding the intersection of these two objects. But then you can see after all these two objects have a nice structure, you know these are both kind of chains, these are you know one one as you know this, so this kind of a structure is usually called a convex chain. So, the red one is a convex chain right the, the black one is a kind of a convex chain and they are also monotone okay. So, we have two nice you know monotone chains and therefore, I claim that uh, intersecting these will be fairly easy and this is also a problem for in one of the this is one of the assignment problems where uh, in general you are asked to find out the intersection of two convex polygons. Okay. So, this can be dealt with in that framework also this is this can be viewed as a problem of finding intersection of two convex polygons okay. and uh, whatever time it takes. So, suppose you know uh, it takes order n time, it is order n time, it is log n time, it is log n time. Yeah. 
So finally, let us let, let me just say that it can certainly be done in, in order n time. Okay, and that is for you to figure out how to do it exactly. And uh, so we will not bother about this final step of you know how do you find the intersection of the uh, convex and the concave chains or the regions regions actually um, chains sorry upward region and the downward region. Okay, so we will now focus on just one of them. Let us say intersection of downward half planes. Now, I could try to now describe or define or develop an algorithm from scratch, okay. which at this point you know I will not attempt to do and now I will try to just find out or explore does this have any kind of relation with what we have done just before this that is from that the convex hull computation. Okay. Now, Obviously, these are two looks like very two, dif two dif very different problems. You know, in one case we are de dealing with points when we are talking about convex hulls. Okay, so convex hulls. Has point input. And intersection. Problem. Has half plane input which can also be thought of about where the half planes are actually described by lines let us say it's one side of the the boundary line right so in one case it's a point input the other case it's kind of a line input okay. so somehow we need to be able to do some kind of correspondence between lines and points to be able to to be, to be able to find out if there is any relation between these two structures at all okay. all right so for that we will will resort to what is called some kind of a duality relation some duality function let us say or duality mapping to be more precise okay so this duality mapping let me define as d okay so what this duality mapping will do for us it will map uh, <coughs> points to lines and vice versa okay so what is a point a point is uh, usually defined by coordinates right so point. So we are this. We are dealing with two spaces, right? The space of points and the space of lines. So to be able to define any kind of mapping, okay. So what do we mean by point? A point is a ordered pair of coordinates A B. Okay. What's a line? Well, a line has basically a parametric equation, right? So A X plus B Y plus C is one possibility, but then uh, there is because I want to relate it to the points, okay. So actually, line is a two-dimensional structure. So again, it should have only two parameters, right? So if you think about the y equal to m x plus c, okay, okay. this is basically parameterized by the slope and the intercept. Okay. So my space of points, of course, is the obvious choice of pair, uh, ordered pair of coordinates, and for the lines, we will again choose a so now we are uh, uh, choose the m comma c representation so that we are dealing with two dimensional spaces so in both so we it's a mapping from two dimensional spaces to two dimensional spaces right so this is what this duality ma mapping will do for us now in literature there are lots of uh, you know different kinds of duality mapping okay and they have different kinds of properties okay so i will first try to uh, describe what are the preferred properties for the kind for the duality function that we want to use okay and then later instantiate one specific function that achieves all these properties okay. so let me first try to elaborate on what kind of properties you know this mapping should satisfy or that if it satisfies then we are in good shape So one thing that we'll do first is uh, say that uh, it's self inverse. Okay, so desirable properties I'll say. Okay. 
So, d of d's of x equal to x, x is either a point or line. So, I want it to be self inverse. So, if I apply the dual transform, uh, if x is a point, I apply the dual transform, I get a line and if I apply the dual transform to this line, I should get back the same point, vice versa. If I x is a line, apply the dual transform to the line, I get a point and again applying the dual transform, I should get back the same line. Right. So, this is one property we would like to have. Another property is that you know is, uh, um, is let us say 1 is to 1. Most good mappings would have this properties, I mean useful mappings have these properties. So, I am only trying to list the desirable properties. Okay. I have not even said what function actually will actually satisfy these properties. Okay. Now, here is a very important thing. Till now, you know this was all fine incident. So, now incidence property says the following. Consider a point P and a line L. Okay. The incidence property says that if P is incident on L, then D's of L, which is a point, is incident on D's of P, which is a line. So, it is incidence preserving. The mapping that we are interested in will be incidence preserving. If a point happens to be on a line, when I take the dual transform of the point, then that is a line. The dual transform of the line is a point and again that point should be incident on the line. So, whatever function we are interested in should satisfy this property. Okay. This kind of implies the following. <coughs> if L 1, so L's will be like lines L 1 and L 2 intersect in P. Okay. So, P is a point. So, L's are lines and P's are points. Okay. So, if two lines L 1 and L 2 intersect in P, okay, L 1, L 2, P, then D's of P, which is a line, okay, can you complete it? Yeah, should pass through D's of L1 and D's of L2. So, does this follow from 3? Follows from 3, right? Because the incidence property, if it incidence uh, pre is preserved, then this point should lie on both lines and therefore, this line should pass through both these points. So, it is a consequence of 3 actually, it is not a separate property per se, but it is just to highlight something that you know we will be able to use make use of this property you know when we talk about this connection between hulls and uh, intersection of half spaces. Okay. So, so, one more thing. Um, So, we are talking about incidence. So, what if the point does not lie on the line? Okay? So, it is either below or above. So, we need to say something about again the orientation. Okay? So, so, above, so I will call it the above below property. So, say that uh, if P lies above L. Now, the above I think is the same way that we are talking previously that in the plus. So, P, so here is a line. So, here is line L and P basically is above L. So, that is what I mean by P is above L. Right. So, if P lies above L, okay, then D's of L, which is a point, okay, Is this depends exactly on you know, what kind of function we finally choose. 
so but i will just prefer this one okay so above below so if the point is above l dl ds ds of l will be below ds of p we just uh, interchanging the orientation that's all but it's consistent so for all points and lines this will be preserved so again let me not even get into what function we satisfy all these properties i'll just use the properties to establish suppose such a function exists such a duality mapping exists then we'll try to use this to show the connection between hulls and intersections okay so again we have limiting ourselves to uh, when we talk about intersections we are only talking about this uh, you know uh, downward planes or upward planes okay. so here is basically what we'll try to establish okay so given a set of downward half planes let uh, i of h denote the intersection consider the duals of the lines describing the half planes h um denote it by s okay. so we are given this set of h downward half planes okay. the half planes are described essentially by a bounding line and which side of the line it is. so we know that you no know, it is a downward side that we are looking at now we consider the duals of the bounding lines that describe the half planes So that duality is defined, right? Where there's a line to point duality. So that those points, I'm calling it S. Right? Let C H of S denote the convex hull of S. Right? So. just to draw the distinction here we have okay this is my downward intersection of downward half planes right now i'm talking about convex hulls okay of points which are the duals of those lines describing the half planes okay and here is my convex hull of the duals of the of those lines the points of the duals of the lines right so what relation does this blue structure have the red structure will doesn't look much the, the, the blue structure looks about half that of the red structure okay in fact is half that of the red structure so what we'll establish is that you look at the chain which is that the uh, the lower hull consider only the lower hull okay 
So, the lower hull is this structure. This, this is again some kind of a convex chain, upward convex chain. Okay. So, the blue one is the downward convex chain, the black one is the upward convex chain, okay, which is the lower hull of this set of points. Right. And now, the claim is that there is a one to one correspondence between this lower hull and that, uh, that blue structure. Okay. Namely, that the half planes that describe the boundary, the half planes that describe the boundary okay, are in one to one correspondence with the points that describe the lower hull. Okay. So, this is the claim. The Exactly. So the um, downward convex chain describing the intersection of half planes is in one to one correspondence with the points which are duals of the lines describing H. This is the claim. So, namely, suppose I am just saying that suppose this is half plane, uh, half plane 3 and half plane 2 and half plane 10 and half plane 20 and half plane you know 50 or something like that these points would correspond to the dual. So, this point will be dual of the half plane, the line describing the half plane 3. So, it is like dual of 3, this is dual of 2 and dual of 10 and so on and so forth, dual of 50. Suppose this is true, before even we have proved it. Suppose this is true, then how would you construct the intersection of half planes. You just take the, the, the you go to the dual space basically. Okay. So, you are given half planes, okay. look at the lines describing the half planes, okay. look at the duals of those lines which are points, use your favorite convex hull algorithm to construct the convex hull of these uh, in the dual space which is with a set of points and then the lower hull of that is in one to one correspondence with the, the intersection. So, once I know this is you know these are the these are the uh, 3 d's of 3 d's of 2 are the points then I immediately get back I can from there I can simply get the structure that this convex chain with the intersection has first it first starts with 3, then, then, the, the, then the boundary is defined by the half plane 2, then the boundary is defined by the half plane 10 and so on and so forth. Okay. So, we recover that structure right away from there, if this, this claim is true. Okay. Why is this claim true? Okay. Let me switch to the, I think so. So, we will obviously try to use the the properties that we claim you know some there is some mapping that will have these properties that, and that is the kind of dual duality transform that we are using. Okay. So, okay. these are all downward. Huh? So, this is my intersection, this is okay. 
this particular half plane. So, maybe I should actually draw them in red. So, this half plane is even not even part of that boundary. You know, this. So, the inter the, the disc a description of this intersection, you know, is essentially the the chain, the chain of the half planes that describe the boundary of this intersection. That's what we that's what we are interested in. Okay. So, so the red, uh, so something like this, these half planes don't even figure in the intersection. So the description of the intersection doesn't even contain those half planes. Okay. So those are basically I'm saying like you know some points are going to be on the hull, some points are not on the hull. So this is the, the equivalent of the corner vertices. Okay. We, now we have uh, so what is the property of this boundary? This boundary. So why do you think that you know this half plane is part of the boundary, whereas you know the red one is not? You know some something something that is here is not. No, 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 let, let's not talk about the dual. We are just trying to characterize this only in terms. Right. Or in other words, you know, you can think about it like this. You know, if you're looking at, you know, suppose I'm trying to draw a plot a function, which is let us say at any point x, what is the minimum? What is the minimum y? that we are looking at. So, suppose these are functions, okay, so these, these, these half planes are like functions, you know, these are linear functions. Okay. At any point of time, I am looking at the min of the, 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 the lines, okay, the min, so which is at the lowest. So, you know, if you draw a line, so these are the intersections, so this is the lowest. So, that is why it is part of the intersection. A, a half plane, so of course, you know, this, this this uh, you know you move this x to here and it still you know this function is the lowest but at some point the next intersection point it changes this function becomes the lowest so it's it's something like what is called a lower profile okay you know, it may not doesn't even have to be linear functions you can describe you, you can define this in terms of any kind of function okay i can have any any arbitrary function okay okay and i can look call the and, and define the lower profile in the same way that at any point the point wise minimum among all the functions is the overall lower profile is what we are calling it. Okay. So, this is one way to characterize that you know something will become a part of the intersection and something some half plane will not be a part of the intersection. Okay. So, okay, now we are going to now now let us go to the dual space. I mean so are you are you happy with this characterization if and only if basically. So, some half plane will be a part of the output only when it becomes a minimum for some x. Okay. So, now when you go to the dual space where you know this line becomes a point, okay, all, all, all lines basically become points. Okay. Uh, when is a point, uh, so, so given a convex uh, a set of points. So, a point is a part of the uh, you know a, a final description of the convex hull or a corner point. If we can draw a half plane or a line through this point a tangent namely. Okay, so, say this is a corner point because I can draw a tangent through the point such that all other points are above this line, right? Okay. Now, can you do? Now, can you see the correspondence between the our dual transform preserve? Well, preserves means it just switches the uh, the upper and the lower thing. Okay. So, I am able to draw a line through the point. Okay. Now, use the the incidence property. The dual transform of this point, okay, this point, okay, is one of these lines. This, that is how I got these points from, right? This line is some arbitrary, arbitrary line, 
okay, that passes through the point. So, the dual of this line, the dual of this line will be some point, will be some point on this line, right. So, this one, okay, will become some point in the line, maybe it is here, the d of t. So, and now, so there is a point basically where all other points lie above this, above this tangent, okay. And at the same, so these these of t, which is a point, they it satisfies, it satisfies all the half planes. It is below of the half planes. That's all. That's the proof. No, it is above below, right. So, these points are above and this point is below all the all the lines. It is we have switched the upper and uh, above the line and below the this thing, right. If the, if the if the point is above the line, the dual of the line will be below the point. So, we have just switched it. That is why we are looking at the lower hull and the and the downward chain, okay. So, I will stop here today, you know, you need to meditate a little bit about this. Uh, but by tomorrow, hopefully, you know, in the next class, we'll be convinced about this.